the pillager add-on. That is pretty cool. But that's also something I like. That's also kind of a good thing about Minecraft. Is, like they're adding like, stuff, but they're also allowing Minecraft. other people like, to add stuff. stuff. It's not like allowing... yeah. yeah not... There's only one way. Not like, not like um, Grand, Grand, Grand Theft Auto, Auto and, and people not, not being able to actually mod shit, shit and. Yeah, no, I totally got it. I like how there's now a parkour community in Minecraft because of how the penny physics work. <laughs> I gotta look that up later, that sounds fantastic. I am muted. So I did actually make a sticky note and I put it in my notes that's for like his business card <laughs> that he is gonna make. I got plans. I don't have that many plans, but I have tiny plans. How do I change my character picture again? Like, on the bottom? Uh... What was the question? I don't know. Uh, how do I change my character picture on the bottom again? Oh, you actually have to change your account profile to do oh. that. Mm -hmm. I have my avatars at the bottom only set to names only, so I have more map space. <laughs> <laughs> I have a very large computer screen, so I'm not too worried about map space. I do not. <laughs> I have 32 oh. inches of gloriousness. Mm. Very nice. I love it. We just have to get you your second screen now. Yeah, but they don't sell this monitor anymore, so I have to get this year's model, which is slightly, which is more akin to yours in style. So not very different, but just enough that it might be noticeable if you're looking. Mm -hmm. That might piss me off. We'll see. <laughs> if we can find it used. Yeah, I found them used online for more or less what they sell for retail. Um, when are, are we uh, live yet, or are we going live? I have started the pre-stream before it shows my screen, so they've been able to hear us for like 10 minutes. So. Oh ho ho! Oh, no. I thought the conversation will... was interesting enough to start it, so... Sometimes it is. Like, sometimes that's all you really need. Tate, you made the pre-stream music. It's your song. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Well, then, if that's the case, are we ready for some D&D? Woo! Yes. Yeah. I have not heard anything from uh, Luna yet. Luna. Yeah, Luna's been pretty quiet. I will play, play her. her. We have to. I will. You, you'll yeah. play her. Oh, all right, I like this. I apologize for being mean in the first game in the first night. Daddy, <laughs> you kill her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sounds perfect, like her. Wow. Thank you. Well. Spot it's not on. Like she's dude. acknowledging her existence or anything anymore. What? Uh -huh. oh, there <laughs> we go. <laughs> Don't worry, don't worry, Luna, we've accepted your apology. Sorry, I was listening to a thing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Told you. Yep. Why is this? Why? Why have you done this to me? Why? Why not? Uh, because I turned off overlay. There mm. we go. I don't need the overlay. So, last time on the Far Flung campaign, 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 <laughs> campaign, campaign, campaign. Uh, Sola, Candor, Grandolf, Bliss, and the new armored Vorton. You were 
kind of tricked and can kind of conscripted to work with Pagif Dirge to steal a lot of money from a old business partner of his, a couple by the name of Madeline and Christopher Gouch. They are two, um, oh, I don't know. Do you remember the description I gave? Because my notes are a little not updated. I, I heard I heard that one that they had a son I think and he was wasting the money and before they were very charitable people and that's about as far as I picked up. Nah, I don't believe I mentioned anything about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> they, have, they have a business association with Sistine. Yeah, a more like description of like what they look like because I just now realized like oh shit I don't think my I don't know if I never gave a description slash if my notes are out of date because they look like they're out of date like they didn't save last time. Yeah, I don't remember a description. That is fine. I can simply give you the description that I want to give. They uh kind of like the generic half elf uh design uh uh fair skin uh. Blonde hair. Uh, Christopher actually has uh, more brun uh, brunette blonde hair, while his wife has more of like the natural like beach blonde hair. They are two of the more wealthier members of Waterdeep who have been investing in one uh, Sestine's adventures to go into the Lost Lands. Uh, to, to rediscover sort of the uh, lost cultures. It, it's a fairly known thing that other people will do this since the uh, Chronicler has been popping in and out of Faerun to help people gather their histories and their lost knowledge. But as it stands, um, you've been hearing a lot of... There's a bit of a tat between Sestine and the Gouches, one that could be exploited, but for now... You have managed to sneak into the party, and we're on your way to begin the infiltration to get you some money, and maybe even buy yourselves out of buy your souls out of debt. I think my soul's gonna be permanently in this guy's debt. I'm trapped in a suit of armor. He promised you to get, to be able to get out as well, so you know. I don't know how he will do that. I don't trust him that far. And he'll unbind you so you can go be with your god. Mm, that is fair. You're on a mission from Gad. That is true. Alright, posting the music in there. Yeah, music. You guys are able to enter into the courtyard of the manor. Uh, it is just as... It, it's almost more bustling and more crazy of a party. A lot more of the uh, intricacies of the dances and sort of the fiesta is going on inside. A lot more crowded, which can be both a boon and not so much, depending on your perspective. You all walk in in your fancy attire, which I actually, yes, from last time, you all took time to get fancy attire, except for poor Kandor, <laughs> who uh, went and spent money on functionality and not fashion. Loser. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you guys enter the party, and it is a crazy amount of people and a crazy time being had. What is your game plan? Get white girl wasted. You guys want to no. get white girl wasted? That can happen. No. Definitely not. <laughs> uh... Listen, I just want Grandolf to get white girl wasted. That sounds like a fantastic time. It really does. It's the best time. I am going to seek out whoever I think Sestine is. I might ask around and whatnot. I'm going to go looking. And I would like to note that I have Tempest with me and my raven is not with me because that would be a little weird. But Tempest probably has like a really cute little bow tie or something on her. Aww, that is so sweet. Fancy. Adorable. I like that. Um, what does everybody else want to do? <laughs> if I could get white girl wasted, I would. Uh, it, that's the beauty of D&D. &D. I can't tell you no. I can only advise you not to do things. <laughs> he is a suit of armor. Is he capable of getting drunk? <gasps> or does the... Can we store... Just go in his pouch. 
Could you do one of those things where you like go to a table and just start like taking stuff? Just, we just like just take a punch forever. bowl. Just take a punch bowl and shove it inside him. Yeah. <laughs> Fill him with food. Yeah. That sounds like some sort of like fetish Ooh. thing, though. So, Maybe it is. man, it yeah, wasn't it's... until you said it. <laughs> <laughs> is there... I've seen too much shit on the DeviantArt front page, okay? You know okay. what, that's fair. It is. Is 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 there, like, a table of slightly drunk, rowdy people that I can see? There are all of the tables with all of the drunk and rowdy people. You're the epicenter of the party, so... Okay. Yeah, you can definitely pull some of this dumb shit off. Okay. So, I'm gonna walk up to the table that seems to have the richest people in it. Am I able to tell? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm going, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it's hard to tell, air quote, the richest. Mm -hmm. Generally, everyone inside this section of the party is pretty fucking stacked or has some kind of major influence. It is literally like trying to find the porcelain doll made of diamonds within the pile of porcelain dolls. That's fair. Well, I go to, th I go up to the table that seems to be throwing around the most money. <laughs> All right. Um, you head over there. You have a lot of like drunken people. You know what? We're gonna say it's a gambling table. Oh, okay. Yep. Like simply like they're playing like poker or blackjack or whatever uh, game that you you wanted them to be playing. Okay, I walk up to the table and I slam my hand down on it and go, Anyone up for a bet? You're talking to the right people, mate. What do you got to us to bet? I bet you I can eat anything you throw at me. Oh my god. <laughs> they all look at each other and they... Mm, mm, anything. This Ooh, this is fun. <laughs> All right. Oh, All baby, right. here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to roll a D100 to see how drunk and how stupid these people are. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. They kind of look at you, and they kind of raise an eyebrow. What's the way... What, what, uh, one of them goes, mm, What's the rules of the wager? You give me anything, and I will eat it. Simple as that. And if you can't... I'll give you all my gold. They all look at each other and kind of give, like, that devious grin. Uh, you can roll an insight check if you want. Insight check? Yeah. I can't find the insight button. There we go. <laughs> nice. I yep. see. Yes. I believe them fully. They, you, you, you have no idea what to feel on these people. They just like they kind of go. All right, seems like a fine wager. We'll take place in. You kind of just think that they're just uh, they're joining in on the fun. Mm -hmm. Uh. Let's see. They. <laughs> They'll, they'll, they'll start off small and, like, kind of, like, they'll immediately, like, hand you a cup. Like, there's nothing in the cup. They just hand you the cup. Okay. So, so the question is, how do you perform this to make it look like you eat the cup? And that you're not I, an empty suit of armor. Yep. <laughs> so, I, I'm like, oh, you give me a challenge, do you? And they lean back and hold it up above my head dramatically. And I throw my helmet back, you know, like full body back, lift the visor and just slowly lower it down in while going. Arr, arr. I want you to make a performance check with advantage because this is very inspired. <laughs> this is really clever. 22! <laughs> yeah. 
like you you even like whenever you clang your helmet to the cup it actually kind of makes like a slightly bendy metal noise a little <laughs> bit yep. so like they actually start to think like you're actually crunching on the cup as it like as it dro drops inside you and they don't hear anything on the inside and they just as you come back down and put your uh, kind of readjust your helmet they just look at you in awe <laughs> I, I laugh. I'm like, I told you I could. Three of them put their money down and walk away. The other two, the two who seem the most drunk, put their money forward and then also throw down two more gold. Can we keep paying you to eat shit? <laughs> Hell yeah. I might get full. How much gold did they give me, by the way? Uh, Let's see here. These are very rich people. How much gold were you betting? I had 114 in my pocket, so... We're gonna say that they. We're gonna say that they each gave you fifty gold. Oh and how God. many men were there? Sorry, there were four people at the table. Okay. Cool. And then two other guys threw two more down. Yeah. Well, no, you had four people total. So two okay. people left, and then two people stayed, and they all gave you fifty gold. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna say that for every item they give you, they're gonna give you another two gold. Okay. Well, gents, I will. I probably will get full if you keep on giving me metal things. So I'll, I can eat probably a few more things. What do you have? Uh, one of the drunken ones actually kind of goes over and seems to be talking to like one of the cooks, and the cook's kind of making a big scene. <laughs> uh, the other guy like rushes off to immediately like find something because he's like, I gotta find someone who like make this guy eat weird shit. <laughs> so. so for now, you're waiting for them to come back with their items. <laughs> I turn back to the group and I like give a slight shrug, like. <laughs> I, will I will just give a thumbs up. up. Yeah, Bliss is also just like double thumbs up. Like, <laughs> my bastard. Gotta fund our adventure somehow. Oh yeah. We're going to steal a bunch of money. This needs to be like our signature thing, right? We just show up in bars around the world, just like <laughs> I can make you a bet. Yep. <laughs> just slap, just slap Vorton's chest. You can fit so much shit in here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Grandolf, you're still, you're, are you wanting to get, uh, white girl wasted? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I feel like that's a bad idea. It is fantastically a bad idea. What do you want to do instead? Um, why exactly are we in the tavern right now? You well, guys we're aren't in a party. tavern. You're at the oh, party. Okay. Oh, we're at the party. And we're trying to find a way into the mansion, right? Yeah, you guys basically are in the mansion. You're, like, in the courtyard oh. of this very large mansion. It's just, there's a, it's a very big party. You have a lot of ground to cover, and you're trying to find the very specific vault where uh, these people keep all their money. <laughs> but there's also a lot of shenanigans you guys can get into, like, stealing rich people's money with a really great scam. <laughs> Oh my god. It's for the greater good. It's for the greater good. Nice. <laughs> Bahamut blesses this thievery. <laughs> Is it really thievery, though? It was an honest bet. <laughs> it was. It, it was, and now they're paying him. Never <laughs> never make bets that you that aren't in your favor. And these exactly. are, and like And listen, like we all know, fantasy rich people... They love spending money on entertainment. Like, mm -hmm. th they are never going to see this as a bad thing. Yep. I have a quick question. Shoot. Did we have a short rest before we came to the party? I am I gonna... S believe we did. Because I sure would have had did. to have gone back to make the tickets anyway, so I was making sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. We'll, we'll say that it, it, it's been a long rest. We're gonna say long rest because, like, you guys have been walking, traveling, doing a bunch of other shit. Like, you would have had time to, like, rest up between all of this shenanigans and then go to the, like, late night end of the party. Oh. Yeah, my two spell slots. <laughs> this isn't a professional <laughs> show. If I'm making mistakes, fuck it. It's more fun for my players. <laughs> um, yeah, so you guys have all of your shit back for this adventure, and, uh... So, Vortun, you are, uh, entertaining <laughs> the rich... Uh, Kandor, you're going. You're specifically trying to find uh, Cestine. Yes. Bliss, what are you up to? And then Gandalf, Grandolf. After that, what are you up to? 
Uh. Hmm. I'll probably tag along with Candor. Mm hmm. I, I'd probably, like, watch. Um. Ugh, Vortud in his betting shenanigans for a little while and then go off to to tag along with Kandor. Okay. Yeah. That sounds like a plan. Alright. Then, uh, Grandolf, what would you like to do? Uh... Am I able to summon my slithery little snack without being noticed, really? Oh, uh, let me roll for that, because this version of Watery, Waterdeep is not as anti-magic as canon. I'm going to say if you do, you know it's going to to kind of rouse attention. You know wow. it won't be bad attention, but it's like people are going to look at you. I'll do it anyways, because my rope glows blue and does cool things. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe okay, they'll okay. be distracted by the pretty colors. No. Ha! Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I can fix it. It's fine. Did you fix it though? I did. <laughs> oh. See, I'm gonna I'm gonna summon my slithery snack. Okay. You summon your snake, and as you do, some of the other party goers look all around you, and they kind of, like, see the snake as it forms. They look a little, like, off-put at first, but then they all kind of, like, start peering at you, and you hear someone say, Did you know Grandolf was going to be here? <laughs> Soon you are set upon by uh, the rich and some of the, the scholarly as they sort of like all begin to introduce themselves to you. Uh, the mighty, wonderful wizard <laughs> Randolph. <laughs> Randolph the Great. Huh? Mm -hmm. Alrighty. So yeah, this lovely little snack is gonna slither his way into like my arm of my robe. Mm -hmm. And then I will mingle with the so-called ritzy folk. Do you want time to think of any information or anything you'd like to hear about, or do you have anything you'd want to sort of, like, squeeze out of people through your uh, natural charm? <laughs> My natural charm? Oh, God. If you're, 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 the, you're the great and powerful <laughs> Grandolf! <laughs> yeah. uh, I'd like to try to directly ask about the house and kind of the layout of the house not, not hinting anything towards about them all right uh i want you to Just make get, like, a general layout right i want you to in character tell me what grandolf would say mm -hmm. like how would he how would he word asking that question all right give me time to go to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give you a hint for you to think on exactly what you want to say, but the hint I would give is maybe like say it as if to like as to complement the the architecture. The architecture. Yeah, no, that's kind of go for. Yeah, you, you have time to think on that. I will come back to it, so I have a answer for you as well. Uh, Sola, you're the only one left. What are you up to? Uh, uh I'm going to. to immediately start wandering around and looking uh just kind of like in and around hallways and the like okay uh as you kind of walk around you kind of meander and take your time you see uh different kids running around like there's like segments where the party is held where there are clearly children supposed to be there are segments where there are clearly lower of the drunkards and then there's just family areas um Oh, there's a lot of rooms that are locked up and are being fairly well guarded by it looks like uh, mercen a combination of mercenaries and the water deep uh, crown uh, uh, crowns guard. Oh no, city guard, not crowns guard. Different thing. But the city guard. Uh, it definitely seems like uh, this. This is sort of like expected of since anybody could be kind of using the size of the party to do some chicanery. Right, right. right, right. Uh, um, <clears throat> I will kind of try my, try my best, best to mentally map out, out 
the locations of these rooms in the uh, mansion and take note if I believe that any of these rooms may face any sort of like window outside or anything like that. Make an investigation check. Okay. You kind of get the idea that it's hard to map out specific rooms. Everything from the outside and inside looks very samey. Like, there's a lot of windows, but it also, like, kind of seems like some of the windows are lead, they lead into, like, blank or fake rooms. Uh, the entire mi uh, estate is sort of built to confuse anyone from, like, ha finding anything in particular. So you can't find any specific rooms, but you're able to deduce that that's on purpose, purposeful design. Okay. okay. What is, what the, is roof the roof made, made out of? Uh, we'll call it, it's like standard tile. As, as I mean, like the ceiling. Inside. Sorry. Ah, oh, the ceiling. Hmm. That's an interesting question. I think <laughs> for the gouches, they would go with something. I think it's like um I have no idea like I'm very like not a fucking architecture uh, architect. Uh I would say just like standard like combination of like stone and wood, you know, just basic like fancy looking like uh marble cut. Uh, I would say there is a clear like difference between like the ceiling and the roof. The ceiling itself is made of like harder rock material and then above that is the actual roof itself with its tiling is this, is this a like one a one layer, layer home or, or multiple, multiple what are we talking, what are we talking here uh e each section of the estate definitely has like four different stories and you guys are on the first floor okay, okay well, well i guess i'm gonna try to find my way to the second floor Okay. Uh, in the meantime, we'll cut over to Candor and Bliss as you are all kind of walking around. You're just like, are you interacting with anybody? Or are you trying to like kind of listen to people talking? Uh, I think it's a little bit of light conversation and asking about, oh, if you've seen Sestine, I want to like compliment her work, trying to find her. Okay. I don't know about um, Bliss, but you know. Right. Um, <laughs> you can either make an investigation check to listen to hearsay, or mm -hmm. you can make a persuasion check to try and convince someone to tell you if they'd seen or like kind of get lucky. And if Bliss wants to help, you can roll with advantage. Sure, I'll help. Okay. Uh, describe how you would nope. help. <laughs> it didn't even matter. Oh my gosh. Uh, I mean, mostly just, like, as well listening and trying to listen to, like, my side of the room. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, it's just a very loud area. You're not really making any headway as it is. And I don't... Can I ask if anyone, like, knows what Sisty looks like? Because I don't... No one told me what she looks like. I I've just heard the name. I would say, in character, tell me what how Candor sure. asks this. Uh, go up to like a group of people. It's like I've heard so much about this Sestine uh, and all the wares that she's brought here. I'm curious if I could find her, or you know, what she looks like, so that I can, uh, you know, commend her for everything she's done. But uh, no one has had a chance. I haven't been able to find anyone to tell me. Could you help me out? Like, ah, oh, it's no problem. Um. I actually don't think I've actually met or seen Sestine myself. I, I've seen, like, parts of her work, and then you hear, like, someone in the back say, Oh, I've actually seen pictures or uh, different uh, portraits of her this, since uh, she's had to uh, write many uh, uh, parchment on the, dis the rediscovery of the different Mastican cultures. Um, I, I believe I can uh, find her. Uh... Ah, here. He, like, uh, kind of pulls a book out of, like, his little, like, uh, uh, satchel. And he kind of turns the book over and shows you kind of like a little artsy in, in illustration of her. She has uh, dark skin, has um, 
black hair that is sort of braided up into like multi uh kind of different length sort of uh braids uh pretty thick braids and she definitely um has more of the uh the mastican sort of uh bone structure she is human but you can definitely say that if she is from Waterdeep, she is most likely like a second or third generation. Like, she grew up here, but she is very clearly of her culture. Okay. And in a, in a in a party and sea full of rich white elves, humans, and half-elves, probably going to yeah. be fairly easy to pick out. Yeah. Alright. And the... Uh -huh. the I would say the last detail that you would know, uh, you know make a investigation check uh, with this as well to kind of like just see if Kandor catches this. He most definitely does. You definitely have the idea that she will be dressed in a very particular attire, like very much like the rest of the nobles. So there's really no way of like confusing her for really anyone else. Oh, thank you. This is very helpful. Maybe now I can uh, find her and discuss with her all of uh, all that I know of Mystique and culture and ask her about it. Oh, you, you do this, you study as well? I've been a, quite a fan of her work. Uh, if you happen to find her, let me know. I would be more than happy to, though. Um, if my understandings are correct, uh, rumors say that she's a little uh, tied up with uh, negotiations. Oh, yes, I've, I've heard. I, it sounds like uh, she's just so busy. I hope that she has to, has a chance to make time for herself. Mm -hmm. Well, no rest for the wicked, as they say. Ha, it's too true, too true. Uh, now that you know what she looks like, I'm going to assume you kind of keep walking onward. You eventually do find her she actually ends up walking up into like this sort of like middle podium area uh you see someone cast a spell as she sort of like clears her throat and coughs and her voice begins to boom outward to everyone and she says thank you all for coming to tonight's actually i'm gonna do this thank you all for coming to tonight's <laughs> party to celebrate the rediscovery and the redistribution of knowledge of the lost peoples and cultures of the continent of Mastika. I know many of you have shown intrigue in our festivals and our drinks, and a lot of people like start giving like major cheers. But I do implore all of you to look past the festivities and see this for a much bigger cause, just as any other people in Faerun have had to struggle for. There are histories, there are knowledges, magics, and things that maybe some do not wish to be re-revealed, but we need to rediscover. And I hope today is just a beginning to whet your appetite for the real meat of discovery and the real portion of what can be refound and refined, just as you all did here in Waterdeep. And there's a there is there a handful of people do give like a, a clap, but there's also a good portion of people who are just kind of like chowing down on their food, ignoring it, or giving like the the pity clap. Well, as she finishes, I want to cast minor illusion a few times okay. and like make like fireworks and like make it sound like really loud, you know, clapping, like clearly trying to make eye contact while I do this. Okay. I'm gonna say roll a performance <laughs> check while you do this. Yeah, You're the hype squad. squad? The hype I'm squad. Totally. I mean, I'm Hashtag just saying. Like, I'm appreciating everything that's going on. Wait, does Bliss also have minor illusion? Potentially. Maybe you could help me out and make it even like more little illusions. Hype squad. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. I can do that. My performance is terrible. <laughs> Uh, Liz, since you're also using Minor Illusion, I'll let you roll performance as well. Okay. Between the two of you, you are able to make a pretty, like, um, bombastic display of clapping noises and, and uh, flashy light show. 
there are a couple people who kind of look at you like very annoyed like you're you're more of a nuisance than you are sort of anything else uh she does for a brief moment make eye contact with you um uh if she does uh you know what I, this is what I have cantrips for. I'm gonna just use message and be like, I'd love to discuss more about your work if you have a chance while we're both here. You can reply to this message. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, <laughs> some people don't know. She she actually smiles and kind of gives you like that smile as if like her facial expression is like calling you cheeky. And she says in uh, to you back in her head, Give me a little bit of time to get uh, rid of the rest of the fat stacks, and I'll find you. I'll nod. We will cut Ooh, back... Ooh, she's gonna find you! Ooh. We're gonna cut back to Vortun. Uh, I made fireworks for you, please! Just for <laughs> <one time. laughs> That's fucking good. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Vortan, what, what? So you've been waiting for the, the the rich people to come back with stuff, right? Yep. You see, oh, uh, this one guy, the one like the one who's super drunk. He brings over a big bag of gold. <laughs> oh no! And the other guy brings uh, like has some chefs like bring over an entire hog. <laughs> nice. All yeah. the gold we put in you later is gonna be like sticky and nasty <laughs> and gross. Who cares? It's, it's covered gold. in hog bits. Hey, that's what prestidigitation is for. Now here's here's the interesting thing. They begin arguing with each other over how much, like, who's going to be get the chance to see this freak show happen because you hear them clearly say, and I quote, "He can't possibly fit both in his stomach." <laughs> <laughs> Now, here's what we're doing above game, because I think this is fun. You can either choose one, the pig, or two, the gold, or if you try to do both, you are going to have to make the most difficult performance check to make them believe you did this and are a human being. <laughs> okay. And... <laughs> Would you like time to think on this decision? It is a very difficult decision. <laughs> no, because I will walk over to them and I go, How many times have you seen a man eat a whole hog, really? That's a party trick any adventurer worth his fluff can do. But a bag of gold? I don't think I've ever seen a man attempt that. Let me try. Okay. <laughs> You can make a performance check as they both sit down and like they both like take a piece of the pay, uh, of the hog and begin eat eating it while they're watching you. Okay. I did the same thing, but this time instead I just pour it. <laughs> <laughs> I just pour the gold. How much gold, by the way? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna roll a D100 and get back with you on that. Kay. I'll go ahead and go ahead and. Mega performance check it is going to be a difficult DC, my friend. Is this with advantage still? No, this is not because okay. you are <laughs> not being discreet with what you're doing. I'm going to say that we're just going to have to see how drunk these idiots are. Okay. Ooh. As you start pouring the gold inside you, you the some of the coins do hit like the back end of your armor before like bouncing inside like oh, the no. actual pit. <laughs> where uh the empty storage of like your uh suit of holding is mm -hmm. and the less drunk one immediately sits up and says you cheating cad and he pulls out hello tim curry i didn't know i had you in my voice <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he pulls out a rapier and points it to you <laughs> Haha, uh, ha, I'm in danger. <laughs> a lot of danger. <laughs> not really. What is he gonna do? He's not, He's not fleshy. That is true. 
I okay. I f- finish up and I flip down my visor and turn to him and I go, "Why do you say I'm cheating, sir?" You're clearly using some sort of magic inside you to keep all of the gold in. You're not really eating anything at all. And what if I told you the magic was that I'm eating? <laughs> do you take me a fool? No. I would never do that, good sir. You are just cl- you clearly have had quite a bit to drink. How about I buy you your next few rounds? You can give you can do that by giving my investment back. And he begins like putting to like the tip of it where your neck piece would be I if like you were alive. I step back pre- clearly not as terrified as I probably should be and I go, "How about the next trick then?" Eat his sword. Eat his sword. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm glad you knew where I was going with this. Yes. I flip are, up. Are I flip up. Okay. I flip up my visor, lean down, and in one motion, just shove my the entire sword and most of his arm down. <laughs> Make, yes. Oh my god. Um. <laughs> All right, this is what I need to ask. Are you trying to do this quickly or forcefully? Quickly. Make an acrobatics check. Ooh. Okay. Well, he you have to go up against an NPC, so you know yeah. what? It might... Uh, who you, is you also tried... drunk. <laughs> who is all... Thank you for reminding me, actually. Who is also drunk? Oh, my God. <laughs> Seven. Yes. <laughs> you, you literally lift open your visor, grab this man by his arms, and start like putting him in. As everyone else just hears, <laughs> everyone turns to you and they see a suit of armor eating a man as his legs are kicking, his arms are wailing, the sword has dropped inside of you, uh, long gone. As na- the one drunkard is actually like now, like very ravenously, nervously eating more of the pig as he's watching this. That's the wrong pig, Zach. <laughs> From there, why don't we go over and cut over to Grandolph as he's being swooned <laughs> over by nerds? Oh my god, how do I fall up with that? <laughs> you can't. I know. <laughs> Um, well, first I'm going to try to find someone that knows, like, about the actual house, I guess. Like, ask around. So if someone says they know about the house. All right, let me roll a D100, uh, because there's a very particular character. Excellent. You kind of begin walking around, and eventually you see a very tall Goliath dressed up in uh, a butler attire. You uh, you get, definitely get the idea that he is uh, he definitely works here, and you walk up to him. And what do you say? Uh, butlers aren't like slaves in this time frame, right? No, like he, he, he is. No, yeah, he is employed. Um, you definitely like Waterdeep does not deal in slavery. Anyone who is a servant is paid. Okay. Um, and another question I have: like, would the time frame? Like still being like centuries, like oh, what century is this type thing? Uh, or... The timelines in D and D basically go anywhere between the twelve hundred and fourteen hundred of that universe's year. So I would say since this is a later version of Faerun, it's like a reboot. It's like in the sixteen hundreds. Okay. And the house would it you say it looks newer, older, like been in the family for a while? It is refurbished. It definitely has a lot of sections of the building that clearly has stood the test of time, but it's been a very well touched up and rebuilt upon. Okay. Um, so I'll go up to the butler. And I'll be like, Hello, good sir. This is a beautiful home. I was wondering if you could tell me more about it. 
I would be happy to tell you of my master's um, estate. It is a long and rich history that I am actually <laughs> quite familiar with. <laughs> Ooh, buckle down. It's gonna be a long night. Okay, well, I was kind of just curious, like, what century it was built in. And who was hmm. who, who designed it? Oh, that's uh, actually a very interesting one. I would say that it's a bit of a mystery on that end, as most of a uh, Faerun and the world's history has been lost to us, but the most that my master's uh, best scholars were able to deduce is it was originally built back in the 1100s and has been regularly refurbished and uh, redesigned at one point in time. Okay. And so, yeah, you guys wouldn't know who designed it. Um, it really is a beautiful home. I was wondering if you could give me a tour, if you don't mind. Oh, and any other day I normally would, especially to uh, someone as well-known as you, Sir Grandolf. But unfortunately, the festivities are keeping me rather alert. And you literally see him reach behind him and pick up a small halfling kid who's got, like, pie all over his face. He goes, ha, ah, ah. Uh, hi, Max. Hello, young master. Would you please go find your parents? Uh, can you? Can I walk there? Yes. This time. And he drops him to the ground. He just runs off. Um. One of I... the friends of the family. He, he's a good boy. He just likes to cause me trouble from time to time. Okay. I was hoping you'd give me a tour of the house. <laughs> God damn it. If you don't mind me asking, what is someone of your prestige doing at this sort of soiree? Last I heard, you were busy trying to discover new magics and spells much further north. Bum <laughs> I didn't think into his backstory too much yet. <laughs> No, rem remember, you don't have to. I'm doing it for you. Oh, oh God. no. Um, hmm, um. We can give you time to come up with a lie if you so need it. Um, no, I can kind of think of something. Uh, he said I was learning up north. Um, mm -hmm. in my trying to figure out. Yeah, maybe give me time. I gotta figure out proper wording here. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, we will cut back over to Sola. You've been sort of scouring uh, the different areas of the party. Was there anything else specific you wanted to do? Hmm. Hmm. If the answer is no, that's okay. I have something for you. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Um... <laughs> Then we can go with whatever you wanted to have heaven. Because you can't really get into any specific room or really not unnoticeably look at different parts of the building, you sort of found your way back into the courtyard where you saw and heard this. <laughs> as you see concerning. As you see Vorton <laughs> trying to devour a noble. <laughs> How many, How many other people are here? A lot. Hmm. hmm. Like, to be more specific, there's more than a hundred people in this courtyard. Well, well pushing him in probably <laughs> isn't a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so... Uh, I'm, going I'm going to walk up and, uh, and uh, tap, tap on Vorton's shoulder. shoulder and then his, his his head kind of falls over and looks at you upside down. <laughs> I'm going to say, I, um, I, um, I, think, I think you have something, something stuck, stuck in your mouth. mouth. <laughs> I take the noble out and I go, Jerk, you seem to be right. And I just place him down, flip my helmet down like, Are we good, sir? <laughs> Guards! As a, a big, like, as soon as this guy starts shouting that some of the, uh, instrumentalists around the area just stop as a big influx of guards begin uh, either signaling with whistles or just become rushing towards you guys. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna dip. dip. <laughs> <laughs> make make a, a stealth check. Because of your tiny size and the party being rather big, you notice that like the crowd is beginning to like move away from Vorton. So you sort of like instinctually dip into the crowd and kind of leave him behind. <laughs> As uh, the guards show up to you, Vorton, uh, they all begin aiming spears and swords at you. And uh, one in particular, I didn't think I was going to... Because you guys got the fucking tickets, I did not think I was going to be able to pull this person out. You see a female half-orc uh, with similarly braided... Uh, like, kind of, like, much thicker, sort of, like, braided hair than uh, the, the description I gave for Sestine. And she kind of walks up in front of you, Vorton. She is actually the same height as you, as she's just glaring at you and says, What seems to be the problem here? This man accused me of cheating at our game, and I was just showing him that it wasn't a trick. He's... He's not a man in there! He's a... A CONSTRUCT! Uh, I both... I prefer Dragonborn. <laughs> both, uh, both Vorton and Sola, you can roll a history check to understand what I just said. Boop! Okay. <laughs> Vorton, you know that constructs are basically, um, machines given some level of sentience. Mm -hmm. Because of the, like how far magic has come and got kind, of, kind of reborn in this universe, they can be as detailed as like a human equivalent, or act as more of just an automaton. So he pretty much called you a magical robot. Oh, I, I look at him like, if I'm a construct, then I then how to word this brain. Um, if I'm a construct, then the definition of eating is exactly what I just did. <laughs> um, roll a persuasion or performance check, whichever you want. Okay. The, the, the man looks even more perturbed, but the, the, the orcish woman just kind of gives a very deep sigh and, like, covers her face. <sighs> All right. That's not the voice I want. Mm. Oh. All right. Nope, that's not it either. You'll find I'll it. Do this. Search you can do it. Search within yourself. You can find her. <laughs> oh. All right. Whose thing is this? Excuse me. I am my I own know. thing. <laughs> She actually, like, punches, uh, you, the helmet off of you. I will... I will walk up and pick up, pick up the helmet. The helmet. And, then just and then just go, um, this, this is, is Grandolph's. Oh. <laughs> yes! <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm a... Did I'm anyone all... else see that bus come out of nowhere? <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will um, walk, walk up to her, to her and then I'm going, I'm sure you know who Grandal is. As she does that, of I'll him, yes. Uh, yeah, you put your helmet back on as, as uh, she kind of looks to everyone else. As you just hear her shout, Grandal! <laughs> as you hear a uh, Grandal, you hear uh, a, a, a deeper woman's voice just shout at you. And, you, and and like and like the Red Sea, it seems like a, a like a parting wave of people begin to open up, leading between you and her. God, I okay, sheepishly I wave I, at Grandolf. Guess I'm going over there now. It was a pleasure to meet you. As uh, she kind of goes, you want to explain why you're leaving your construct unattended? Roll a history check, Grandolf, to see if you know what a construct is. <laughs> what the fuck's a construct? <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
You did it. Good job. Oh, I did it. Look at me go. I'm so proud of you, hun. Uh, um, I can't even lie out of this now. <laughs> Does he look like absolutely flabbergasted? Yeah, but then okay. that one, like, literally you see the math equations in okay. front of you, Grendel, okay. you're I, trying to figure out I, what the fuck she just said. I step up beside him and just, like, nudge him, like, Master, I am the construct, if you remember, that's not the name you gave me. <laughs> uh, yes, this is, we don't really call him a construct, he's Borton. I cross my arms I slightly defiantly. <laughs> she rolls she, she rolls her eyes. I don't care if you call him Sniffles the big red dog. Will you please keep it on a leash? And yes. not terrorizing the other guests. Will do, I'm very sorry. What about my money? It stole money from me. How much money did I pour into myself? Three hundred gold. Holy oh, shit! Nice! <laughs> Are you sure it stole money from you? You look pretty drunk. Actually, it was my money. <laughs> As uh, the guy who's like, he's got like mess all over him. He's like, he passed out in the pig halfway through this entire <laughs> oh interaction. My God. He, he kind of look and, and uh, they kind of they, they look at each other. Uh, it's, it's, that's beside the point. He he took money on false terms. I was entertained. <laughs> Keep it! I got plenty. I bow to the man. Oh, are we at a party? I bow to the man. I'm like, I am glad you were entertained, my good sir. And then, like, uh, the the guy kind of looks at you as like, Haha, uh, I'm drunk. I think I see Grandolf. <laughs> <laughs> He passes back out into the pig. Uh, fine, but keep that blasted thing away from me as he storms off. Um, oh. As he storms off, I will reach inside myself and take out 50 gold and give them to the orc lady and be like, be sure this man gets his money back. <laughs> she she kind of looks at you, looks at the gold, takes three off the top. I'll be sure I get sent there directly. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you have so much gold. <laughs> I mean, even if we don't actually end up looting this place, <laughs> we're still, we could... still made quite a bit of money. You, you guys, I fun. made a bit of money, thank you very much. I helped. Hey, hey, hey. I'm not taking a fall for you. I get a cut of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same. <laughs> I'll give you each your share later. Since, since I own you, apparently. That's no my man owes, owns Vorton. Only the gods do. <laughs> but, I, but you're my construct. Spe speaking of which, uh, speaking of which, Vorton, you feel a an odd warmth inside you as you uh, give the gold over. You get you definitely get the sense of this was entertaining for everyone. Mm. <laughs> is the still in you, or did he take that back? We still have the rapier. In oh my god, the rapier is still inside. Yes, it is. He didn't grab it out. He stormed off. Why did I um, buy an one? An empty mug and a, and a rapier. Now, uh, where is my inventory? Man, I gotta say, uh, th you dying is probably the best thing that ever happened to this campaign. <laughs> You're gonna become like friggin' Mary Poppins's like <laughs> bag, where we yeah. can just pull literally anything out of you in any given situation from eating shit randomly. Yep. So I'm just gonna do this. This is why I love being a DM who just comes up with shit on the fly because oh my god, does fun things happen. Um, with that, I'll say. Bliss and Candor, you have a date with, um, the, uh, with, with the Cestine. person of interest, Cestine. You all have free time to do what else, ever what else you want, or we can move the plot along because this is a party. I already tried to kill you. You guys deserve a little bit of something. <laughs> um, I would like to 
pull my hood up and uh, let Tempest fly around a little bit above everybody. Okay. I'm going to tell her, be as sneaky as you can and just, you know, look for anything suspicious or like what we're looking for. And I am going to see if I can pick a pocket hole. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. Jesus. I need uh, money for a sneak. <laughs> so you're you're rolling <laughs> you're rolling sleight of hand. Uh, because you're invi like you're invisible with that cloak, right? I'm not invisible. I have like advantage on this one. So, so uh, kind, uh, kind of note to that, that is that happening concurrently to the fact that, that there are. are Probably, probably less, less guards, guards in the area, area because, because they're, they're dealing with Vorton. <laughs> yes, that is, that is a good uh, situation to think on. I would say going doing this in front of doorways, not a smart idea. There's going to be a lot of guards there, but in the more mesh pot of people, you have an easier time with it. So yeah, go ahead and roll advantage with stealth. Yes. Right. That's Amazing. fine because they still have to make deception checks against you. Or perception checks. Yeah, they don't do it. <laughs> uh, and you can make two sleight of hand checks, separate sleight of hand checks to try and steal money. Or items. Is that an advantage or at normal? Uh, we're going to say advantage because there's a lot of people. Okay. Very nice. Okay. Sweet. We're gonna say we're gonna. You know what? We're gonna let the wonderful D one hundred decide for us. Ooh, you managed to pocket forty eight gold. Nice. And let's check this. <laughs> okay. You also managed to accidentally pull out a key. Ooh. What is it with him and keys? It's like this new thing now. <laughs> I'm I'm okay with this. Yeah, you don't know what where the key where the key goes or what it's supposed to go to. But as you were pulling out money, a key began to f fall out of uh, one of the different people's pockets, and rather than letting it drop to the floor, you just kind of nabbed it. Sounds good. Bliss, what do you want to do? I'm gonna get a drink. Okay. Uh, I have to ask the question, does Bliss look like she has the appearance of someone who's old enough to drink? <laughs> yeah. We're just double checking. We have we literally have Sola who like Do I need is to whip out my ID? <laughs> like It's just yeah, gonna be a middle finger, finger, finger anyways, let's be it honest. It is. I'm gonna reach in my pocket and pull out a middle finger. I just have to be sure because people around you will react differently. Um, yeah, so you, you go get a drink. Um, it is a party, so it's mostly punch spiked with alcohol. Hell yeah. Uh, uh, how many, how many do you go through? I'll That's take one. All right, make a... smashed on the job. <laughs> Listen, we just had somebody, like, try to devour a noble. I, I got <laughs> this time. <laughs> Sorry. I was succeeding in devouring a noble, thank you very much. Yes, you were. I got right. interrupted. Right. <laughs> they interrupted your meal. Vorton! He, oh, God. He Vorton, he Vorton, Vorton says, eat the rich. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Evil resistance. Let them eat the nobles. Let them eat the nobles. All right, you you uh you kind of just get one drink. I'm not gonna make you roll anything for that. Is that the only thing you're doing? Yeah, and people watching. All right. Uh, roll a perception check. Okay. You uh see a crowd of people kind of coming together. Uh, like not just being like in their one section of crowd. There's just, like, this large segment where there's space given, but also people are focusing in on one area of the party. Like a dance circle? I can't really <laughs> tell from this distance. I, uh, down the rest of my drink, and I go check it out. 
as you get closer and kind of squeeze through the different people, uh, you start to hear uh, different conversations kind of being said, a lot of questions. But more importantly, you hear the name Christopher. Christopher. And, uh, yeah, Ooh. like a combination of Christopher and Mr. Gouch. Okay. I, uh... I flag down someone who looks like they know what's going on, and I ask them, Hey, what's going on? Oh, oh well, it, it, Mr. Gow's just finally come out to join the rest of the festiv festivities. Him and uh, Madeline have been upstairs for whatever reason for some time. Bliss just, like, raises an eyebrow and, and just, like, grins and goes, Anyone's guess. <laughs> Roll! <laughs> She, uh, the woman kind of like smacks your hand playfully. It's like, oh, be polite. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I just grin and like nod. Uh, do you continue to like, uh, go deeper into the crowd or do you go off and do something else? Um. Sure, why not? Let's follow this rabbit hole a little bit. You kind of dig through and sort of, like, uh, squeeze through the different crowd of people as everyone's, like, you get closer. You see everyone's handshaking, everyone's talking with, uh, w with Chris. I want you to roll an insight check. Sadness. Uh, he seems polite. He he's, he's smiling, he's doing the necessary gestures, nothing seems too off. Maybe he's a little tired. This party's kind of fucking crazy, and everyone keeps getting smashed and eating people. It happens. Typical party stuff, you know? <laughs> uh, you hear you hear a little bit of talking, and you hear someone say, uh, no, where, where's Madeline? Um, any special reason she's not here with us tonight? A couple of them start to laugh, and he puts his hands up. He's like, now, now, let's not make fun of people at the expense when they're not here. She simply wasn't feeling well. I went to check on her. She'll be down with us momentarily. Just give her a minute to rest. And then you hear someone, I give her a minute to rest, eh? Oh my god. And, uh, the, the rest of the, some of the people begin to disperse from there, but he's still, like, kind of talking between different people. Okay. I see, I see. If you do you want to do anything else or interact any further? Um Nah. Alright. Just gonna be uh, inconspicuous. Alright. Yeah. I will say we'll go back to uh Candor. Uh you've been stealing money, uh you got forty eight gold. Um I'm assuming you kinda go and find Sastine at this point. Uh yes. Alright. Uh, you meet up with her in a uh, less crowded area of a hall, where kind of some of like the the less dr drunkards of the party begin to uh, gather inside the uh, the different uh, parts of the estate. Still a little bit of drinking going on, but it's much of a more of a calm situation. You see her sort of uh, leaned up, uh, kind of like talking with someone, and pulls away from them. Is uh, I'm assuming you put the hood down to reveal yourself, but, like, not, yes. like, Haha, I was invisible the whole time! <laughs> no, just to put it down, it's just, you know, blending in with the crowd. You know, I'm, I'm a tiefling. Our kind, typically, high rewards in crowds. It's fine. Okay. Uh, you walk into this part of the estate, and she notices you and excuses herself, and she walks over, and she offers her hand to you in a handshake kind of manner and says... Sestine. Uh, yes, apparently you already knew that. Uh, I take her hand, bow, and, like, don't kiss her hand, but make the motion, too. That's, right. like, the pleasure. Just, like, kind of, like, just the, the yeah. like, the courtesy of it. Yes. Uh, yes, I've heard of you. I am a cantor. I, uh, have an interest in your culture. And what part of my culture are you so interested in, exactly? Well, it is. I'm very new to Waterdeep, and I honestly don't know much, but it intrigues me. I have always been interested in things that I don't know, and well, your culture is something I know very little of. Well, I seem to be getting that a lot lately, but um, if you have any specifics you'd like to keep up with me, uh, you can always discuss with me later. I do have plenty of my book being handed out 
uh, for free around this party to spread the knowledge as necessary. Uh, yes, but uh, I also came because I heard that you and your um, patrons, as it were, I mean, kind of like, you know, sure, I don't know how to say like business partners, but because it, it doesn't seem that way, um, mm -hmm. how they, uh, you haven't been on the best terms, and that's unfortunate. For the God's sake, this rumor again. Yes. I'm going to make this very clear with you. There is nothing going on between me and the Gouches. They have funded my research. They have done what they asked. This is simply a way to get other people to fund into it as well. There is nothing wrong. Ah, well, I mean, that is honestly good news. Uh, it's good to hear that there isn't a problem. But, of course, I had someone that I know, a business associate, if you will, who was particularly interested in uh, your culture as well. And uh, he doesn't want me to say anything more at this time, but he would like to meet you. Oh, a mysterious benefactor who wants to meet me to, what, to get in on the ground floor of the next great local uh, tavern secret for their fantastic new ale? Or maybe a chef who wants to start learning the secrets of my, of one, mind you, of my other people's spices. As, you know, Mastican food, it's all the same. Are we quite done here? I just, like, laugh. I'm like, oh, you're, I love your sense of humor and uh, the sarcasm. Lovely. I appreciate it. Um, but no, he is interested in your culture as a I, and I'm here on his behalf. We wanted to help fund your research but I mean if you're not interested and you want to you know leave it as it is that's perfectly fine I'm only doing as I uh, agreed to well I apologize then you are simply doing your job seriously my apologies on that I I've been getting a lot of your... Benefactors have been sending plenty messengers to me as of late, and I'm just a bit tired of it. Oh, I, I can imagine. I, uh, I assume that you barely have time for yourself with things as they are, but uh, it's Whenever understandable. I'm... In the middle of my expeditions and my research, I have plenty of time for myself. It's less of having to go to, and she kind of motions towards the entire party, these soirees that, it's just not me. Yes, they are a bit uh, tactless, to say the least. Maybe not tactless, just much. Yeah. Flamboyant's a good word. I think I've heard a lot of uh, the other people say around here. Uh, yes, that is uh, definitely not my forte, as you can see. But, alas, I mean, you do what you can. Uh, you do. If there's anything oh. else I can help you with, just let me know, and I will be more regarding of patience. Uh, he's going to take out his little business card, and it's like, well, if you would like to get in contact with me, this is where you can find me. Uh, she takes the business card and kind of looks at it, and I'm going to reread what you sent me earlier. Now, she she will see the actual writing on, like, the back of it, uh -huh. but anyone else, anyone else that looks at it will see, like, the illusion. Okay. She reads it, and she kind of, like, plays with it a little bit, and then, like, looks at you, and... I need you to roll an insight check. I didn't want to tell you to do it sooner. Like, I'm she'll she'll think to roll an insight check on this. No, no, she's not. Okay. Uh, he's just having polite conversation. Um, okay. She definitely flashes a look of concern as she looks back up with you and looks at the card, and she sort of like folds it in her hand and smiles at you, a little bit of a fake smile, and says, "Well." Thank you once again. Candor, was it? Yes. I, I try to live true to my virtue name. It's what we can do. 
I will reach out if I'm able to. Thank you. Of course. And, like, before she turns, I'm going to snap my fingers and have my raven uh, summon on my shoulder. And just be like, ah, there you are. It's been a while. I know that you're, you want to enjoy the party as well. And I'm going to walk away. She kind of jumps, as so do a couple of people, as they hear the flapping of wings all of a sudden. Uh, when they realize it's just a crow, they just kind of chill out and still kind of eyeball you as they leave. Um, and as she, like, starts walking away, I'm just going to send a message. It's like, I mean, I understand being distrustful of people, especially in a setting such as this, but uh, I hope you know that I'm not trying to dissuade you from whatever it is you're doing. I just want to help. There's a lo- there's a se- uh, pretty sensible pause for a minute, and then you hear. It doesn't matter what you're trying. What matters is results. Oh, that's that's what I'm known for my results. As I send another message, just every time, you know. Okay. Christ. Burning through those spell slots. That's not spell slots. It's a cantrip. Message is a cantrip. Yeah. Ah, okay. I'm fine. Thank you. I think I'm confusing it with a different, uh... There is another one, but it's a much longer distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the one I'm confusing it with, because in my old campaign, our wizard would literally... We used to say our wizard was a fucking telephone as often as we (laughs) would use that message. Oh, sending! It's a sending spell. You're using message. God, yep, yep, yep. Uh, all right, we'll cut over to Grandolf, Gorton, ah! and Sola at this point. What have you guys been doing since that whole debacle? Um, <laughs> am I able to, like, have my snake go around the house unnoted? Uh, Slithering can... about? They can make a stealth check. Oh, God. Does that, is that off of mine, or...? No, it's off of the snake. It's off the snakes. Let's go to my snakes page. Um, uh, character, oh. Um. <laughs> it has a stealth bonus of three. <laughs> yeah, All right, roll, roll a deep. You should be able to click that. It's, Thanks. it's sheet is very weird. Like, it's not a normal sheet. I'll just roll a d20. You can hit dex. Because it doesn't actually have, like, a stealth. Like, you oh, can yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I see, yep. Yep. Oh, so it just clicks dexterity? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a nat cool. one, unfor- uh, Okay, cool. So, Grandolf 17. Okay, perfect. Yeah, your snake, <laughs> uh, does in fact, uh, kind of slither into the grass, kind of goes into one of, like, the different, uh, uh, holes of the, uh, building itself. Um, do you have any kind of magics or connection to your snake? Uh, I can telepathically talk to it. Alright. But it can't, like, obviously respond to you. Uh, well, it says it can telepathically communicate with it. Uh, so I don't know if that means it can talk to me. It's via the fine familiar spell, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. You can see through its eyes and listen to what it hears, but that means that your body basically doesn't have any senses while you do that. Only seeing through the snake. So it can't communicate back to me? No, but if you find a space um, where you can be undisturbed, you can look through its eyes. Go to the bathroom! bathroom. Yeah, no, I'm (laughs) going to. (laughs) I heard a background, Luna, but I didn't hear what she said. <laughs> I think she was saying, say like you're super drunk and fake being sick. Uh, I think you're muted still. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to tell the snake, first of all, telepathically to kind of make its way upstairs. All right. Um, and start exploring. I'm going to find somewhere private. Uh, I'm going to find a bathroom. I suppose it doesn't take too long for you to find sort of like a washroom to clean up and do your business uh they don't have like plumbing per se in this universe because it's yeah. fantasy but there is like a a system of sort of like 
for you to kind of go into a washroom and take care of that. As you go in, it is a single person uh, oh, room. Oh god. <laughs> segmented into like different uh like there's there's multiple different like little like shack like structures. Very well made. Um very showing off like even when we shit or fancy kind of logic. Yeah. Uh, you go into one of the stalls and you sort of get prepped up to look through your eyes. I'm gonna do that. Okay. You look through the eyes of the snake as it like starts uh, finding its way up the building. It is pretty much just seeing guards patrolling at different halls and levels back and forth. It's uh, staying in more of the crevices and the cracks. Uh, before, like, kind of quickly moving around to get around their feet. Yeah. Well, you are uh, wanting to go to the top floor? Uh, yeah. And, like, if there's, like, a door that's guarded, like, see if we can get, like, under doors and stuff to go into rooms. You see, eventually, as the snake is going through, uh, there's this spot uh, on the wall where the snake is sort of, like, hissing and sort of, like, smelling something. But mm -hmm. through its eyes, you don't see anything. It seems very interested in this one spot on the wall, but there's just nothing of importance that looks like there. So it eventually does kind of move on. And you ev after a little while, it does eventually find its way to, like, a doorway and uh, shows you a window uh, as it goes, it, like, sneaks into one of the different rooms and shows there is sort of, like, a closet room with a window for you guys to get in on the fourth floor. Okay. Um, and, like, I'll make a mental note of that spot on the wall. Okay. What did I miss? Uh, Grandal Snake found a window for you guys to climb into. Okay. On the top floor. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I could get up there. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to ask if Tempest has seen anything? Like, just... Yes. Okay. Tempest is not able to get around like uh, the snake is. Like, it's not able to sort of, like, slither in between cracks and whatnot. But it has oh. kind of fl uh, flown around and kind of gone to different spots. Um, it pretty much just kind of rec recons and shows you, like, where a lot of the guards are kind of walking as it, like, checks out different windows as they you see... Uh, multiple different guards also kind of doing the same patterns of what uh, Grandolf Snake did as well. Basically, uh, you are able to tell that the guard patrol inside the building is probably the the real meat of the security. Okay. Um, has she noticed anything invisible? Because she can't see through invisibility. She can? Yeah. Hang on. It has detect invisibility. Within 60 feet of the Tressum, magical invisibility fails to conceal anything from the Tressum's sight. You see one spot on the wall. Hey, that's my wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what you see is a very peculiar looking door. It is got etching and different runes and glyphs uh, and writings on the door itself. And it's just, like, in the middle of a Just the middle of a hall. Like, it doesn't even look like it's supposed to connect to anything. Um, is it, like, top floor? Very top floor in the middle of one of the different, like, four way, uh, foyers or, like, hallways. Okay. Interesting. I'll keep in mind that. Well, wouldn't she about, about after finding that I'll have her all the Sure. <clears throat> but yeah, that's a, a recon. Alright. Uh what does everyone else want to do before you all meet up again? Oh. Hmm. I'll just go stand somewhere. Um, Grandolf went to the washroom, right? Yep. Yeah, I'll just stand outside the washroom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck with him now. The guards are on yeah. to me. 
<laughs> Pretend to be an empty suit of armor and scare the shit out of anyone who walks by. Yes, I will do that. It's only a prank. It's just a prank. Yeah, uh, just... Do you guys just all eventually want to meet up and like kind of share information? Yeah, and Severus yes. is hanging out in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very interesting thing if you're a Harry oh. Potter fan. Oh. <laughs> Woo! Anyway. <laughs> uh, with that, um, we'll say this to kind of save time. You all uh, discussed the what you'd seen, what you had interacted with. Everything. The biggest things is you see a there's a door in the middle of a hall that doesn't seem to lead anywhere. Guards are everywhere. There's a window on the fourth floor that'll let you sneak in into there. One of the only rooms that'll let you do that that you know of. And uh, Madeline is still inside the building somewhere. Uh. I, uh, I tried to convince this team, but she seemed wary. But you know, there's only so much you can do as a complete stranger to somebody. So I did what I could. What do you, what do you mean by convince? Uh, I will get back to you in a second. Somebody's internet's dying. Dun dun dun. Is the router in the den with the spoon? <laughs> Not the spoon. Anything but the spoon. Oh. That, would, that be would be a painful death, though. Right? You've all seen that video, right? Yeah. What? The extremely slow. Killing with a spoon or whatever it's called. Oh, the extremely yeah, yeah, slow death that. with the most extremely in an efficient weapon or something like that. Weapon. There we go, yeah. Is it? What's it called? I'm the horribly slow murderer with the extremely inefficient weapon. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love that short. Sadness. We might, we might have, have to cut, cut it short. short. I'm guessing. Oh. Yeah. Since it's it's been twice, yeah. I gotcha. I mean, you guys made progress. Like, you guys yeah. got d definitely like have a means to do things for next session. So that's okay if we have to stop here. I almost acquired a noble. <laughs> <laughs> Our own personal noble. <laughs> That would have been interesting. This guy to be sure to take him out every every ten minutes so he could breathe. <laughs> just like, help just like me, oh god, help! Just, just open help. up your helmet and it's it's his face. It's just like he's drowning, and then just push his head back under. No, we keep him so it looks like I have a head. <laughs> oh my god! I mean. There's a lot of flaws in that idea. <laughs> oh, quite a few. We could probably, we could probably get, get some sort of item, item and, and get, get some, some sort of magical illusion attached, attached to it that just looks, looks like, like a head. head. Yeah. If we do, I want Fabio's head. Oh my god. <laughs> we could, like, Fabio. make you a little, like, mask. Yeah. For underneath your helmet. What's underneath my mask? It's another mask. Just, just get like a fucking uh, dragonborn. Um, hey, hey, a mannequin. It does like a mannequin head and stuff it under the helmet. You're, you're thinking <gasps> too small. I can be anything and anyone. You just, we need a mask for each race and put yeah. them in like like descending size order so that you start with the biggest and you just keep taking them off and <laughs> one, of, one of your guys' greatest plans of distraction is for them it's like now let's see who this paladin really is and they keep pulling masks away <laughs> while everyone else gets away yeah. yes yes exactly if, if I like go 
in him, can I still cast spells out but be in the suit of armor? <laughs> uh, no, because he is technically a bag of holding and yeah. he would suffocate. What if I poke my hands out of the head? <laughs> <laughs> can you breathe through your hands, Bryden? Well, I'm gonna have like my upper half. I'll attack and then I'll receive back inside so of him until my next turn. <laughs> is it a true bag of holding or is it like a custom bag of holding that's in me? I'm gonna need an explanation of what you mean on Cause that. Because if it's I've a true bag of holding, it can hold up to like 500 pounds of stuff, and then it's full. And if it gets damaged anyway, everything comes spilling out. And also, if it's a true bag of holding, it holds up to 10 minutes of oxygen for a living thing inside of me when I put a living yeah, thing that, inside of me. <laughs> that's generally the logic that I've been using. Okay. Uh, yeah, so if, if basically, here's the lot if you die again, th like everything just comes shooting out of your armor. <laughs> it's like a loot goblin. Yeah, it's <laughs> into a bunch of money. Oh no. 560 gold just fly out of me. <laughs> I just, I just, I just picture it now. You've all been captured by like orc barbarians. It's like, orc boss is a pinata. <laughs> oh, no. oh no. Kind of. I mean. Just put like a bunch of sand in me for distractions. Like, pocket sands. Oh. <laughs> Vorton sand. Cha -cha! <laughs> just hold me upside down. Just everything starts falling <laughs> out. So. Just out. It's it's like, like with, a, with bag a bag of holding, holding is it just like a like side dimension? dimension? Like, like what is it? Like, like hypothetically, yeah, yeah a bag of holding is like dimension. a pocket dimension. So, dimension. so yeah. if I was to shoot an arrow or like a crossbow bolt into him, could he, could he hypothetically take off his head and shoot it out of his body? Uh, it's more of like it would be in there, I think, and then you could just because you can't stuff doesn't just fly out of it. You have to actually think about what you want to pull it out. Yeah, the logic that I've understood bags of holding is that like if you use a bag of holding to catch something in motion, as long as like the motion itself does not break the the thing that is the bag of holding, once it goes into that dimension, like the laws of like gravity and everything just cease to function. So, like, the arrow just stops in the pocket dimension, and then you can reach inside and grab it. Hmm. Sadness. It would be so fun to make, make him into a machine gun. gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just shoot a bunch of arrows into me. And then... I mean, te te technically speaking, what you could actually do is fill him with 500 pounds worth of arrows... Uh, hang him upside down by his ankles, take his helmet off, and then just watch 500 pounds of arrows drop from a high height onto someone. I mean, you could do that with rocks or anything. You can. Yeah, rocks that. would yeah, probably be better. So let's so say, let's say currently if we <laughs> put, like, <laughs> lava or something into this guy. <laughs> With, or, like, or like acid. Wouldn't that, wouldn't okay, that, that, destroy it? that would have to be done very, very carefully because if the lava doesn't like, you'd have to literally do pinpoint accuracy that the lava is going in the magical portal to the pocket dimension and does not actually hit him. Because if it hits him and damages him, it's going to break the bag of holding. So how far down my neck does the bag of holding start? I kind of consider it to be at chest level. Chest level, okay. So I got like half a foot ish, depending on how long my neck is. Yeah. Okay. Put like bottles, bottles of, of poison, poison or something, or something into, into you. you. <laughs> well, if we're just putting things in him. <laughs> <laughs> what would you want to think about this functionality? We also uh, the party inventory bag. Yeah. I can hold up to 500 pounds of things. I currently have a single rapier and however heavy 564 gold are. Yeah, I'm going to say, like, if you keep, like, getting gold like that, like, I kind of love the concept of just, like, mm, that's going to be 2,000 gold. It's like, all right, give me one second. You, like, go <laughs> inside and pull the end. <laughs> Vomit gold all over him. That is a... That is a brilliant thought. Mm -hmm. uh, well, if we want to call it tonight, uh, then you guys at this point have figured out a way into the mansion. You've potentially found something rather interesting. 
uh, you've potentially made an ally or contact with Sestine, and you understand that uh, one of the gouges is out in the party, the other one is not. And that is where we will end tonight's session. What if I tried to eat one of them already? No, no. Just eat eat one of the, the gouches as like a hostage? What if he's <laughs> the one who gave me the money? He did walk away and come back with a bag of gold. <laughs> Yeah, the one, the one drunkard, I literally just made like, he's so drunk. And, like, halfway through it, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, no, the drunkard brought the gold, the fucking only semi-drunk guy brought the pig. I got that mixed up. Mm -hmm. oh, you just go to, time. like, ye old ATM and take all that out, or what? <laughs> <laughs> you try typing in, like, a pass, like, you draw, like, a, a number pad on his chest, and he's like, I'm sorry, you put in the wrong passcode. Let's try again. <laughs> Thank you for using Paladin Storage Services. Oh my god. You have Amazing. entered the wrong passcode three times. He, like, opens his, his helmet up, pulls out an axe. Prepare to be terminated! <laughs> <laughs> oh lord. Uh, Fantastic. Well, I will have my notes reorganized and retouched up on for next week and we will continue the adventures <laughs> of the far-flung gang as they fucking eat people and rob people blind yeah, no. yeah. hey i wasn't robbing them <laughs> no you were not like they they openly were choosing to give, give you money <laughs> yep and they never did ask how i ate <laughs> no, no because the one guy got super freaked out and the other guy was too drunk yep Exactly. I will catch you guys later. It's been Absolutely. fun. It was fun. See you later. Bye. Bye. I see dead.